Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. And welcome to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage on The Savage Nation. You're welcome to join the program today. You can join us by just dialing one 855 400 Savage, 1 855 400 7282. Log on to our website, michaelsavage.com. Sign up for the Savage newsletter at michaelsavage.com. Arrives two to three times a week to your inbox. It's totally free. And also, celebrate America this July 4th with Countdown to Mecca, the latest bestseller by Dr. Savage. Again, you can purchase your copy, Countdown to Mecca, right at the website, michaelsavage.com. Also a reminder, Savage Scholarship winners are going to be announced July 2nd. 1,700 applicants submitted essays on what it means to be an American. Five winners will receive $20,000 each, total of $100,000 that Dr. Savage put into this. Again, that's going to be announced on July 2nd. Well, President Obama has generated more news. President Obama has decided to drop the N-word. Now, right now, as we speak, as you know, race relations, it is a difficult time, inflammatory time, tension on all ends, all the different rioting that took place, plus now, the massacre in Charleston, South Carolina at the church last week. And President Obama, why do you think that he decided to drop the N-word? Is the president, in your mind, is he someone that is bringing people together or instead inflaming the situation and getting either a further divide? Let's listen. This is the president. He's doing a podcast interview now with Mark Marin. And regarding race. Racism, we are not cured of. And it's not just a matter of uh, it not being polite to say n***er in public. That's not the measure of whether racism still exists or not. It's not just a matter of overt discrimination. We have societies don't overnight completely erase everything that happened two to three hundred years prior. Why do you think the President of the United States is dropping that in on language that I can't even play, that they don't use on television? There was the hit show on Fox, Empire. The characters on the show, the writers, they wanted to use the N-word about a uh, rap star becomes a mogul of a, a record label. They wouldn't even let Fox use it for the show Empire. Is the President of the United States. Would President Reagan have used that? Why do you think... I'll tell you why I think in just a couple of minutes. But why do you think President Obama intentionally dropped the N-word in the aftermath of everything that is going on right now? 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. On Fox News, the guest was Deneen Borelli. And Deneen Borelli touched on the president's use of the N-word. We're talking about the President of the United States using the N-word. He has really dragged in the gutter speak of rap music. So now he's the first president of rap, of street. I mean, come on. Uh, He has lowered the stature of the high office of the President of the United States. What is the purpose of using that? How about, have you been at a mall and there's a group of teenagers and they're tossing the N-word around? Or how about the fact in all the different rap songs, as that guest was saying on Fox News, and they use it back and forth. And now the president is using it. Is the president using because he wants everyone to start using it? Is it a way to appeal to a certain group? Is it to make a statement? Why is it? There was no way. Do you think that was an accident? There was no way that was an accident 
that the president of the United States, would Ronald Reagan have used that word? Would President Bush 41 have used that word? Would President Bush 43 have used that word? One, eight, five, five, four hundred savage. I, I just I don't find it presidential. I don't understand, although I, I, I don't know exactly why he decided to drop that in other than you have a very inflammatory situation really all over the country, but especially right now in South Carolina. Now, as we speak, the cries are getting louder to take down the Confederate flag. Now, it doesn't fly above the state house in South Carolina, but it flies on the grounds in South Carolina. And the Confederate flag, where you have the head of the NAACP saying, we're going to play it for you right now, Cornell William Brooks is saying it is nothing more than a symbol of the atmosphere of hate in America. And this is Cornell William Brooks on CBS Face the Nation saying it must come down. The NAACP has led a boycott of the state of South Carolina for years on end because we are endeavoring to bring that flag down. The fact of the matter is that flag represents exclusion. It represents bigotry. It represents bias. There are white nationalist groups across the country who see that flags representing their values. The fact of the matter is our American flag represents the values of the majority of Americans. That is inclusion. That is democracy. That is the spirit of our founding fathers and our founding mothers. It has to come down. It must come down. The Confederate flag, especially if you grew up in the South, I have to admit, I mean, growing up in the Northeast, I, 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 but I recognize that people in the South, it's very, very important. And they say it's a matter of Southern pride. But you're hearing more and more. Now, the governor of South Carolina is expected to say that it should come down. Lindsey Graham is expected to announce that it should come down. This is a a real minefield for Republican candidates being asked. A couple of them tried to dodge it over the weekend. What do you think? 1-855-400-SAVAGE. But why is the president of the United States using the N-word? Let's start on line one with Dave, who's listening on WBAP in Fort Worth, Dave, welcome. You're up first. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Savage, and you're on the Savage Nation. Hello, Dave. Uh, hello. Thanks for having me on. Very uh, welcome. Uh, yeah, the uh, President Obama more or less incited this, uh, everything, just like the, the white kid, 20-year-old white kid that killed the uh, nine black people in the church. Well, Obama incited that by saying he only cares about young people of color excluding young white men. And uh, what does that make uh, the young white men in this country feel like when the President of the United States excludes you from helping you? And, uh, and you know, what do you do? I mean, the guy is like, uh, you know, he's, he's racist. You feel the President is? Th- thank you for the call, Dave. one 400 savage I also want to play cut two of, uh, excuse me, cut one. This is President Obama. And again, the president saying, you know, we're not cured of racism. Is if I, I don't know if it's something that, I mean, do you think that's something that ever would be cured? People that are still upset over slavery in 2015? The, the, you know, the president of the United States is a person of color. And the president saying we're not going to be cured. But this is where, again, the president doing that interview, where he continues to talk about race relations and even mentions the legacy of slavery. It is incontrovertible that race relations have improved significantly during my lifetime and that opportunities have opened up and that attitudes have changed. That is a fact. What is also true is that the legacy of slavery, Jim Crow, discrimination, in almost every institution of our lives, you know that casts a long shadow, and that's still part of our DNA. He still keeps talking about slavery. Continues even in 2015 to talk about slavery. Let's go to line three. Brandon is listening on WABC in New York. Brandon, welcome, and you're on the Savage Nation. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Thank you for answering my call. Very welcome. Go right ahead, Brandon. Um, as far as the, uh, the, the slavery issue, there is, uh, among this day and age, there still is that feeling of slavery around. You do have your blue-collar workers, you have your white-collar workers, 
you have some people who are uneducated, yes, that they can't get certain positions, but that don't make that does not mean they're not successful. I think a lot of uh, uh, too much emphasis is being put on right now as as citizens of America, citizens of New York City alone. This is a big melting pot. We live in a different state than South Carolina, Florida, uh, North Carolina, which I have lived in, and you do feel the racial tension out there a lot worse than you feel it here. But that still doesn't answer, Brandon, on, on the president of the United States using the N-word, the president using language that can't be repeated on the evening news. What message does that send to young people? Have you ever used that word? No. I, I, you know, thank you for the call, Brandon. No, I don't use that word. And the president to say, you know, it's just not a matter of being polite to say the N-word in public. See, th- this goes along, folks, with this narrative that people like Brandon and people like the president seem to think that behind closed doors, Caucasian people, people that are not African-American, are using that word. I'm telling you that they're not. Or they're certainly not uh, out in public like that. But he seems to feel, the president does, as soon as he leaves that Hollywood fundraiser, that that they're using that word. And this business of slavery, because someone has a, a mid-level job. Let's go to line five. Mo is listening on WMAL in Washington, D.C. Mo, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Mo. Yes, sir. I think that it's obvious why other presidents haven't used that word. I mean, the, pre- the current president is in a position to be able to not only give a speech on race and to use that word because he represents whites and blacks. I mean, I know that you disagree with that, but that not, I, I'm not going to say disagree with it. But that, I thought President Clinton was the first black president. Who? Well, yeah, well, he was it from a negative perspective. And, I, and me, as an African-American person, I don't take that as, you know, because it was from a negative perspective. And All I, right, well, then why did he use the word, Mo? Well, I told you, to, well, he used that word to start, to, all, to, to start a conversation. His position, he has the ultimate bully pulpit. He has the ultimate position. So for him to use it, he didn't use it in a derogatory way. He was just explaining he mentioned the word and explained in a bigger context of what was going on. And I see absolutely, he didn't stoop down. The lady that said that he, he, he lowered the office, you know, lowered the, the, yes. the office, I disagree with that. I mean, there's people that feel that way anyway just because of who he is and his policy. That he <laughs> now, see, there you go. Thank you for the call, Mo. There you go. Oh, people feel that way. Folks, is there ever an end to the, to the victimhood, to being a martyr? So, no, I don't you think I think he lowered the dignity of the office by using that language. I do. What do you think? One eight five five four hundred savage one eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. And do you think that that Confederate flag should come down off the grounds in South Carolina? It's John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Neil Borchardt. Racism, we are not cured of. And it's not just a matter of uh, it not being polite to say no in public, that's not the measure of whether racism still exists or not. It's not just a matter of overt discrimination. We have to, Societies don't overnight completely erase everything that happened two to three hundred years prior. If you're flying it, or if the state is flying it as a symbol that African American citizens are not equal to everyone else, or should not be equal to everyone else as it was flown during the segregation era as a symbol of massive resistance, take it down. Stomp on it for all I care. If it's flown next to Civil War memorials, next to Civil War monuments, as part of the, pro- uh, the process of teaching the public about our history, as messy as it is, that's part of history. You're listening to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You can call the program 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Yes, the first cut you heard was the President of the United States, President Obama, purposely. The question is why dropping the N-word and talking about you don't erase things that happened two to three hundred years prior. Boy, folks, it is just never. Did you get the feeling it's never going to end? And the second voice you heard, that was David French of the National Review saying stomp on the Confederate flag, which the alleged gunman 
in the church shooting in Charleston, South Carolina. He was posing with the Confederate flag. He had it on his car, and that's why that is uh, in the news so much right now. And we're expecting to hear from the governor of South Carolina, Nikki Haley, who's uh, expected to then say that she wants it removed from the state capitol grounds at the state house in South Carolina. Let's go out to your calls. Let's go to John on line six, who's listening on KSFO. John, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, John. Hi, John. I just wanted to say that I personally believe that if you're going to disband the Confederate flag in the South, uh, up here in the North, see every once in a while people flying the uh, original 13th Colony flag, why not disband of that as well and just start throwing our history right down the toilet with it? Well, I mean, why, does anyone feel that that flag that you're referring to, that first of all, you're in San Francisco, but does that does that have any connection with with racism? There, there are people that are saying, African-Americans saying that that flag to them symbolizes racism. And the flag you're referring to, is there any connotation with that? I'm not familiar with any. No, I just I just figure it's from the same time period. You know, like the North flew the, the round, you know, red, white, and blue stars during the Civil War, whereas... Well, you know, you got to remember who was fighting for who, and the Klan has used that that flag, and I, I recognize in the South, it's it's tremendous element of Southern pride, and it's part of history, but it is, uh, it, it's a dividing line right now. Let's go to line two. Patty is listening to the Savage, Va- uh, Savage Nation in Las Vegas. Hello, Patty. Hi, John. Thank you. Very welcome. Um, for me, if you... Well... I'm just so frustrated. I'm sorry. I'm very angry with President Obama. He has inserted himself into this situation, sent Eric Holder to Ferguson, Trayvon Martin, the situation in Boston. Uh, Enough already with him. I truly believe, based on those facts, uh, calling his grandmother a typical white woman, I truly believe he is the racist and that he would like to see a race war. Thank you for the call, Patty. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. More of your phone calls coming up on The Savage Nation. You're listening to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're welcome to join the program. Just dial one 855 400 Savage, 1 855 400 7282. Remember to celebrate America this 4th of July. Countdown to Mecca. Dr. Savage's new bestseller, it is available right now for you at michaelsavage.com. Log on to the website, michaelsavage.com. You can also sign up for the Savage newsletter. It arrives two to three times a week in your inbox, and it's totally free. And remember, the Savage Scholarship winners will be announced July 2nd. 1,700 applicants submitted essays on what it means to be an American. Five winners will receive $20,000 each, a total of $100,000 that Dr. Savage put into this. Again, log on at michaelsavage.com. Remember, at michaelsavage.com, you can also get the latest headlines. And some of the headlines you'll see, American adults surpass children in taking drugs to stay focused. Folks, is this what it has come down to? ADHD, attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder. It's not just for kids anymore. Right now, the adults have overtaken children in taking medication for the condition, accounting for 53% of the industry. Now it's adults who can't pay attention. You also have, it's now confirmed that the White House lied about Jonathan Gruber's role in developing Obamacare. Now, many of you have made claims about this, and now it is confirmed that the White House lied about this whole thing. So there's also stories on climate change, climate change involving the Pope, the Weather Channel now even taking an active stance on climate change. You can read all these headlines. Don't forget, if there's two websites you check, one is the Drudge Report, and the other one is michaelsavage.com. Let's go out to your phone calls. Line 9 is Natalie, who's listening on WMAL in Washington, D.C. Natalie, this is John DePietro, and welcome. You're on the Savage Nation. Thank you. 
Welcome. Go right ahead, Natalie. Okay, I think that Obama used the N-word, well, precisely to maybe outrage a lot of people. I mean, maybe a lot of white people would have heard him say that and be very offended that he used that word. And then his, his thought might be, because it got the attention of white people, maybe then they would have to think, oh, even though I don't use that word, I'm still racist because I do think this or that. So I think he was trying to say that just because you don't use the N-word doesn't mean you're not a racist. Well, here's the thing, Natalie. I mean, don't you find that word to be offensive? I find it to be offensive, right? yes. And should the president, I mean, don't you think that's kind of below the office? Isn't that unpresidential? The office, the president is using language that is offensive in that way. Is that, you know, is that so just if someone doesn't use that word, that doesn't mean that, you know, that you're not racist? Why does it have to continue to be the focus on race and that it's never enough and racist and you know, Natalie, is that really furthering discussion, dropping the N-word to then kind of shock everybody? Well, yeah, because, I mean, I'm not offended that he used the N-word, but I think that maybe he thought that he had to do it just to incite a conversation so that people would say, oh, I can't believe he used that word. But instead of saying, oh, I can't believe he used that word, they should look inside themselves and find out other reasons why they might be racist just because they don't use the N-word. I mean, I... I don't mind that he used it to prove a point, but I'm not pro-Obama, but it doesn't bother me that he used the word. Thank you for the call, Natalie. You know, the, the, the president's saying, and let's hear it again, this is President Obama. He was doing an interview with Mark um, Marins. This is a podcast, keep in mind, so it's not something broadcast. You're going to hear it when it's beeped out, but he says racism, we're not cured of it, just a matter of not being polite to say the n-word in public let's hear this is clip to president obama racism we are not cured of and it's not just a matter of uh it not being polite to say in public that's not the measure of whether racism still exists or not it's not just a matter of overt discrimination we have societies don't overnight completely erase everything that happened two to three hundred years prior you know, look at the American public. And again, our phone number, one eight five five four hundred savage You know, Bruce Jenner becomes Caitlyn Jenner overnight, and everyone's just supposed to, you know, accept it and, and, and was in uh, general in America. Then you have the woman up in Spokane who who is white, who was born white, who is saying, no, I'm black. I, I think the American people are, are becoming very accept, accepting of how different changes intolerant. But the overt racism, I, if you wanted to, can't you point to so many different things, overt racism, right? So that someone doesn't get a job, is it because of race? Someone doesn't get into a school, is it because of race? Something fails, it has to be about race. When does it, don't you feel that way? When does it start to be about the individual? Let's go to line, floor, uh, line four. Mark is listening on WMAL in Washington. Mark, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Mark. Uh, thank you very much. The only issue I wanted to bring up is the fact that Regardless of one way or another, whether I believe in the Confederate flag is that or not, what I disagree with is Obama coming out and talking about the fact that this is about racism. And the point that I wanted to make is that if he is so much about this, he needs to come out and talk about any other issue that could be potentially discussed as racist just in our backyard, the Washington Redskins. I have yet to hear him come out and say that, the, that Dan Snyder needs to change the name because it is offensive to other people. So if he is going to take the point that certain words and certain images and certain symbols are racist, then he needs to come out and do it for everybody, not just for one section of the community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the call, Mark. Folks, what do you think? I mean, why is the president dropping the N-word? It was done on purpose. It's a matter of trying to figure out what is the play there? What is the strategy? Who's it appealing to? Who's going to cheer him on? Is that, you know, is this going to be done at rallies? Is this about the massacre that took place in Charleston, South Carolina? Is it something bigger? He just, don't you find, I find the president seems to inflame the race situation more than, it's not healing anything. 
I don't find that he's healing anything. Can you point to a situation that he stepped in and made it better? It started with the beer summit, and which was a war on the police, and it just continues to flame up. one 855 400 Savage. Let's go to line two. Arlene is listening on WSBA. Arlene, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Arlene. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> this president has done more to divide the races than any other president ever has. Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, starting off with his uh, inventing racism by his nutty professor friend. It was a friend, it wasn't the police. Then Trayvon Martin, who told his girlfriend a cracker was called named, that that's a racial slur for white people. So we know he hid behind that bush. He wanted to beat up or kill a cracker that night. And when it turned out he wasn't white, they invented a word, white Hispanic, so they could invent racism in there. And Paula Dean lost her show while Al Sharpton still has him, his, and who's the biggest racist, Paula Dean or, or Al Sharpton? It's just such a double standard in America. Um, when Michael Brown was killed, a couple days later, a young white man was killed in Salt Lake City by a black cop, and nobody made an issue of it. I heard it one time on the radio, one time on a rally show. And his life was just as important as Michael Brown's, but I never heard it. I don't even know what his name They said his name one time, but I didn't write it down. I wish somebody would look into that story and do a story on double standard in America. Thank you for the call, Arlene. You know, Arlene is right about the Sharpton thing. I mean, he he certainly still has his platform on MSNBC. He's going to be working with Brian Williams very soon. That's Brian's problem. But, you know, keep in mind, in the backdrop of this right now is what's going on in South Carolina, where they want that Confederate flag taken down. Let's hear. This is clip five. NAACP head Cornell William Brooks talking about that Confederate flag. And this was the shooter, the alleged shooter at the church in South Carolina, Dylan Roth, that he was posing with that Confederate flag. It was on his car. And now they are all screaming. Let's hear clip five. They want that flag taken down. The fact of the matter is the Justice Department uh, underestimates uh, the degree of hate crimes in this country because they have to rely on self-reporting. That's a challenge. And the fact that we have at least uh, two to 300,000 hate crimes in a given year is unconscionable and inconsistent with our values as Americans. So we've got to address that. Let's go to line nine. Keith is listening on KCPS in Iowa. Keith, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Keith. How can you have an honest discussion if you're gagging the other side? You, you throw stuff at them where they can't respond sufficiently or properly in any kind of fashion. You know, you throwing grammar wars at people is not having an open discussion. Do, do, do you mean me or you referring to the president? The president. The president. All and, right. So you, you're, you're saying he's gagging the other side. How do, you, how do you mean he's gagging the other side? The fact that he says the N-word and then his opponents or anyone that's not of color, they can't use the word? He can come out and say the N-word, but if anybody else broadcasts it, the FCC's all up their rear end, fining them and, and applying penalties and stuff to them. Even more than that, if you remember, remember Michael Richards from uh, Seinfeld? He did that, you know, quote, comedy routine. It didn't seem that funny, but he was trying to do a comedy routine, and uh, and he certainly, you know, he, he hasn't been seen since. He's he's basically blackballed. You had the... Um, the, the owner of the, the Clippers, who was then Donald Sterling, was, was drummed out. So it is, you know, thank you for the call, Keith. It, it is definitely one way. There's, there, there's no way. I mean, there's no politician. Can you imagine if, pick someone, pick anyone on the Republican side, if they ever use that word, that, that they would then be drummed out of, of the race, uh, meaning the, the, the race for president. I don't mean race in general. But one eight five five. 400 Savage. Let's go to line three. Dallas is listening on KBET in Las Vegas. Dallas, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Dallas. Hey, John. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I just wanted to comment on the racist thing and then the flag. So, you know, um, uh, you know, I, I view the N-word as anybody who is a substandard person. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they're just uh, despicable. You can't trust them or whatever. Right. Um, that's my view on it. You know what I'm saying? Agreed. I, I, I would never use it, you know what I'm saying, if uh, 
if African Americans want to use that for each other and it's a term of endearment, who am I to say anything about it? You know, I'm saying have fun, live life. You know, I'm in the military, and, uh, you know, I, I can't, you know, display the Confederate flag. There's a lot of things that I cannot display because of what the interpretation is and the symbolism that is, you know, recognized by those items. You know, I grew up watching Dukes of Hazard. You know, I love that flag just because it means Dukes of Hazard. It means rebels. It means, you know, doing what you want to, having a brain to think for yourself. So if you make me, if you, if you say that I cannot display it, I mean, really, what am I fighting for here, you know? That, that's a good point, Dallas. Thank you for the call. You know, anyone, have you been in a situation, folks, uh, again, like a public place, a mall, or maybe a restaurant, like fast food or something like that, or maybe public transportation? And you definitely hear, not only people of color, but I've heard, you know, young Hispanic, both male and female, using the N-word. But why do you think the president used it? And I, I, I don't, I mean, do you think, does that, help this business of well that gets the discussion going and he had to say it and how how in any way i think if anything that he he's driving more of a divide between what we'd call white america and black america by you know just dropping that word and and trying to make a point out of the word and as far as overt racism and discrimination it, it, it just seems to be endless with that what do you think one 855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. Remember our website, michaelsavage.com. And as I said, you know, all the latest headlines, all the stories we're talking about, there's links to that for all breaking news and headlines. And you can sign up for the Savage newsletter. Log on at michaelsavage.com. It's John DePietro filling in for Dr. Michael Savage. More of your phone calls coming up. This is... The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. We need a change in attitudes among everybody. Lawful gun owners, those who are unfamiliar with guns, we have to have a conversation about it and fix this. And ultimately, Congress acts when the public insists on action. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're welcome to join us. Dial 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Let's go out to line eight. Anne is listening to the Savage Nation on WABC in New York. Hello, Anne. Hello, thank you very much. I'll be brief. Um, he is an antagonist. He was waiting for this. This is his catalyst to be able to speak in the manner that he wants to. And it's also his last term. We must remember that he was a community organizer that had to come to Chicago to learn about the tribulations and all the sorrows that we had already gone through while he was away. A man who refuses to accept and to, he never mentions his grandmother and his mother who was white and an anarchist, his grandmother, a white banker, instead of bringing peace and right. unity, these people put him to shame, but he has an agenda. This is his chance now to talk about gun control. This is his chance now to antagonize, and the more antagonizing you do, and the more disoriented we are, and the more chaotic things are, the less the focus is on him, and the much more fodder for the de- well, uh, Democrat Party. That's, that, that's true, Ian. One thing, he's certainly not bringing people together. Let's go to line three. Richie is listening on WBOB. Actually, uh, we'll get to more of your phone calls. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Savage Nation. Log on to our website, michaelsavage.com. Check out the new book, Countdown to Mecca, just in time for the 4th of July. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, 
Psychological Nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're welcome to join the program today. You can call 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. Remember to visit our website, michaelsavage.com. Celebrate America this July 4th with Dr. Savage's new bestseller, Countdown to Mecca. Celebrate America this 4th of July with Countdown to Mecca, and it's available on the website at michaelsavage.com. Sign up for the Savage newsletter. Arrives two to three times a week to your inbox, and it is totally free. Sign up for that Savage newsletter at michaelsavage.com where you can read about how the Charleston killer was raised on the liberal credo of Obama and Hillary sign up for it at michaelsavage.com and just a reminder the Savage Scholarship winner is going to be announced July 2nd 1700 applicants submitted essays on what it means to be an American five winners will receive $20,000 each a total of one hundred thousand dollars that michael savage put into this again that's coming up on july 2nd now some of the headlines you can also read about whether it be at michaelsavage.com or the drudge report such as that humans will be extinct in 100 years says an eminent scientist or i love this scott walker moving to weaken tenure for state college professors you can read those stories and more by logging on to the website at michaelsavage.com. Well, the controversy continues in the aftermath of the tragedy, the massacre at the church, South Carolina. President inflamed it by dropping the N-word. We'll play that for you. And also now, it is a full-blown controversy. They want to take down that Confederate flag in South Carolina that it doesn't hang above the Capitol, but it's on the grounds of the Capitol. You have Democratic Representative Bakari Sellers saying the Confederate flag, a banner on which the shooter justified his actions. I am under no illusion that the Confederate flag walked in and actually pulled the trigger, Um, but it did give this young man a banner under which to justify his actions. Um, And that banner under which he justified his actions is callous, that banner breeds hate. And for many of us, um, looking at that every day, my good friend Clemente Pinckney is going to be laying in state um, on Wednesday, 30 yards away from that banner. That banner where this young man went back just to find some refuge and, and solace um, in his hateful views. And that's why we sit here today, and that's why we yell, and that's why we scream, um, and that's why we want that thing to come down. That was on CNN. Now, the president is headed to Charleston to deliver the eulogy. President Barack Obama will head to Charleston on Friday to deliver the eulogy at funeral services for Reverend Pickney. The state senator, one of nine people killed in this racially motivated shooting last week. Vice President Joe Biden will also join the president at the funeral services. That was just announced. Let's go out to some of your phone calls. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. You know, many people saying it's 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 not hateful. It's Southern pride. It's part of history. It's not filled with hate. Let's go to line three. Richie is listening on WBOB. Richie, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Richie. Hey, hey. hey I just hey. To say why Obama is inserting himself is because he is a narcissistic megalomaniac. He's a rotten, spoiled child that has to constantly be the center of attention in any situation. And, uh, you know, he, he would be Taylor Swift if, if he could sing and dance. I mean, he just, he just has to constantly be on the TV, on the radio, inserting himself with hateful, divisive comments in any situation. It, you know, I'm from the South, and this thing in Charleston really affected me and our family, you know, Savannah, Brunswick, Jacksonville. Um, 
and it's just uh, it's just a shame, a shame that the, the leader of the free world, our president, would have to on the same day come in with politics into in such a, a, a hurtful situation like that. And he, and you know I'm a son of the South. I'm white. I had ancestors that you know, fought in the Civil War. Um, but it, it's time. It's time for the flag to come down. I totally agree with that. It's, it's time for it to come down uh, with respectful uh, dignity and reverence and be placed in a, in a place of like a museum or something. Right. Um, Richie, Richie, you know what's interesting, though? The president, he, he doesn't tone things down, does he? I mean, he, he inflames, to me, he inflames these situations involving race. Absolutely, because it plays in his politics to keep us divided, to keep us hateful, to keep us hurtful. Um, it, it just, it, it just is, is what he's about. He's, he's got a dark, dark place in his soul. There is just an incredible void. Um, and as a Christian person, you know, and I put my Christian beliefs over anything, over my sense of being a Southerner, over my sense of heritage, my, my Christian beliefs come to the forefront, my belief in Jesus Christ. And, and he, you know, I wish I really could witness to him. I wish I could sit down with him and share the gospel and that it's about love, and it's about forgiveness, it's about reconciliation. It's well, about- thank you for the call, Rich. You certainly don't hear that coming out of the White House. Let's go to line two. Don is listening on WMAL. Don, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Don. Hello, John. Thanks for taking the call. Very welcome. Uh, Barack Obama is not my favorite president. If anything, I think he should have resigned some years ago. But he's done nothing wrong in this case. Let me explain why. His use of the word, which shall not ever be mentioned, is contextual. He was simply explaining how it's used in society. And frankly, I found it refreshing that he was open and clear enough to be able to avoid this rampant political correctness that's stifling our ability to talk with one another plainly. There's an example that, that would describe this. A very hard-working farm animal called a jackass can also be used as a weapon, just like that other word can be. The word was designed, the N-word, was designed as a weapon to use against someone uh, to strip away their dignity, and most people recognize how foul it is. However, I can use the word jackass in the terms of describing a farm animal that works on a ranch or a farm. I can also use that as a weapon. Are we soon going to hear farmers across the nation telling their sons, well, we bad to go out and hook up the J-word because we've got some plowing to do, son. But, Don, how, do, how does this, I mean, he, he is the president. I don't think it's presidential. And how is this helping the situation by using language that only, you know, one side of the debate can use? I mean, that, that, that's not, I, th- there's got to be another reason why that was thrown out. I don't think it's a matter of political correctness. It's offensive. Isn't it offensive? So, I, I thank you for the call. I, I disagree with that because I, I there, there's some intent on his behalf to use that word. Don't you think? 1-855-400-SAVAGE. And in case you missed it, let's play it. This is clip two. The president doing an interview. Mark Marion. You're going to hear the beep. That's where he drops in the N-word. His exact line is matter of not being polite to say the blank word, N-word in public. This is, let's hear it. This is President Obama. Racism. We are not cured of. And it's not just a matter of uh, it, it not being polite to say n- in public, that's not the measure of whether racism still exists or not. It's not just a matter of overt discrimination. We have to, societies don't overnight completely erase everything that happened two to three hundred years prior. Let's go to line eight. Ben is listening to the Savage Nation on WABC in New York. Ben, you're up next. You're on the Savage Nation. Hello, Ben. Yes, hello, John. Let me educate everyone while we're on the air. First of all, the so-called N-word came from the Scottish brogue and the Irish brogue, who were some of the people who originally had some of the slave labor in the South. And the word Negro or Negra came from that word because they were saying it in such a fast way with such a the deep Irish, Irish brogue or the Scottish brogue that the word Negro came out in a long fashion. So it's not a derogatory term. Yes, it is. Come on. I mean, come on. Are we dealing in reality, Ben? Yes, it is. Why do you think it's not even said? Let me 
educate everybody on this. It's not a matter of educating. That uh, you, you're living in fan. Thank you for the call. You're living in fantasy land. Don't don't start. Yes, well, we're going to educate everyone. No, that is a word that, and for right reasons, is deemed defensive. When it's said, it is said in a derogatory, offensive manner, and you can't convince me, or I don't think anyone else otherwise. Now, right now, apparently, the governor of South Carolina, Nikki Haley, is now calling for the flag to be removed from the grounds of the state capitol in South Carolina. Uh, I, I would like to hear, if you are if you are from the South or you have a problem with that or feel that it's not a symbol of hate, that uh, this is just political correctness, you know, I've, I've gotten a number of email and other people on social media saying it is just Southern pride, you can call into the program, 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. Don't you agree that the the leader of the free world, the president, should not be using the N-word when doing an interview, what, whatever the circumstances are, the point that's trying to be made? Let's go to line nine. Perry is listening on WMAL in Washington, D.C. Perry, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Perry. Hey, how you doing? The, the, oh, very well. Go right ahead, Perry. Oh, the quick points I wanted to make was, one, the, what our nation, great nation, suffers from, particularly on um, both sides, black and white, but particularly Caucasian, is we've never been properly taught about what happened here with those who were shipped in the holes of ships from Africa. Now, uh, what we the little bit we've been taught in public schools or a couple of um, TV shows, Roots was groundbreaking. I was 16 when it came out. But really, as one who's studied um, black history, I'm not talking about the way college is presented. I'm talking about going in-depth. Um, man, there's much that has not been taught. And that's why you hear the kind of calls that you get, like the young lady from, I call her June Cleaver, um, from um, Las Vegas, and a couple other calls, because we're just so naive. I mean, so naive. We're living in a Wally and B world right now when it comes to this. And that's why we can't understand why we might react to things the way we do, because this thing is so woven into the fabric of this great nation that is almost becoming, um, like, it's not out like the president made the point. That's why he used that word. Why, Perry? What, what's not being taught? What don't we know? What about the, there are movies that talk about it and 12 Years a Slave and how much more needs to be taught? We don't have enough time. We can have a whole month series on it, but you know, start with the American Eugenics Society from the beginning. I know, but, but all- I mean, how much more do you want to? I mean, there's Black History Month. There's movies about it. There's documentaries about it. It's taught. It's not denied. I, I, I mean, if anything, I, I think there should be more on uh, World War II and was done there, instead of uh, how much more, what's not being said or hasn't come out? Folks, 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You're listening to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're welcome to join the program by calling 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. I noticed The Hill is reporting President Obama has no regrets about using the N-word to make a point during a recent discussion on race, the White House said. The president's phrasing renewed a debate over who is allowed to use the N-word and when it's appropriate to say it. The president claims, so the White House claims, Josh Erna saying the president use of the word and the reason he used the word could not be more apparent. Now, in a new development... South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley has now said, let's hear it, she says we the do Confederate not need flag is going to go. Loser here. We respect freedom of expression. And that for those who wish to show their respect for the flag on their private property, no one will stand in your way. But the State House is different. And the events of this past week call upon us to look at this in a different way. Fifteen years ago, after much contentious debate, South Carolina came together in a bipartisan way to move the flag from atop the Capitol Dome. Today, we are here in a moment of unity in our state, without ill will, to say it's time to move the flag from the Capitol grounds. 
Chris is on line four, listening to the Savage Nation on WMAC in Georgia. Chris, you're up. Hello, Chris. Hey, John. Just a quick comment, just kind of get straight to the point. Um, it just seems like, it looks to me like the left basically is trying to take this atrocious uh, thing that happened and try to exploit that and try to divide a division between the people. And I think the people of America have come together and we pulled together to support this church and stand behind them and uh, mourn with them through this tragic uh, uh, situation. So now it almost seems to me like they're trying to take this flag and issue and try to use that to try to drop a wedge between the people and create uh, turmoil and chaos and and just try to create that same strife, the same way they try to do with other situations. Thank you for the call, Chris. Well, they they have, and and they are. And watch now uh, as... The Republican candidates that are that are backing it. Patrick on line three is listening on WBAP. Patrick, you're up. This is John DePietro, and you're on the Savage Nation. Hello, Patrick. Yes, I got the opinion that no, this flag should not come down just because one, you know, terrorist decides to use that as his backdrop. You know, I take the position of history. You know, take the position of history, and they're all through the Southlands, even in Texas, there are Confederate cemeteries that are kept and maintained by the taxpayers. Okay, so take all the flags down, erase all of the history. We still have these cemeteries, so you're going to go through and bulldoze all of these headstones of of men and uh, people who served at that time and got killed at that time. This is History is a part of our history. Right or wrong is still history. So, you know, I've got the opinion. That's my opinion. Yes, my opinion. Yeah, no, I understand. Thank you for the call, Patrick. Well, it, it's, again, no one is trying to uh, erase history, but the, uh, the pressure right now to remove that and then uh, the governor announcing that, I believe Lindsey Graham was with her, you have different Republican candidates. This is definitely going to be one of the things they're going to be asked. 1 855 400 Savage. 1 855 400 7282. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855 400 Savage. 855 400 7282. You're listening to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You can join the program by calling 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. Celebrate America this July 4th with Countdown to Mecca, the bestseller by Dr. Michael Savage. It's available right now on the website, michaelsavage.com. When you're there, well, you can check out all the latest news and headlines, and also sign up for the Savage Newsletter, which arrives two to three times a week to your inbox, and it's totally free. Sign up today for the Savage Newsletter. And don't forget, coming up on July 2nd, Savage Scholarship winners will be announced. 1,700 applicants submitted essays on what it means to be an American. Five winners will receive 20 thousand dollars each a total of one hundred thousand that dr michael savage put into it again go to the website michaelsavage.com you can see all the latest headlines whether it be the fact that latin america is bashing donald trump's immigration position trump of course now has announced he is in fact filing and has filed with the federal election commission whether it be the drudge report or michaelsavage.com. You can also read, how about American adults have now surpassed children in taking drugs to stay focused? ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, it's not just for kids anymore. More adults are on that. Now, Scott Walker is also one of the headlines that you can read about. Moving to weaken tenure for state college professors. You know, I'm glad to see this because too many times the college professors feel that they can say or do whatever they want because that vital protection. Well, you can't get rid of me. I'm tenured. Governor Scott Walker is moving to weaken that. You can read that, many other headlines, whether it be the Drudge Report or 
michaelsavage.com. Now, in regards, Scott Walker, by the way, Governor Scott Walker, who's behind Jeb Bush in the latest Republican polls, he is now also joining the governor of South Carolina, Nikki Haley. The governor has announced she wants that Confederate flag moved off of the property of the state capitol. And I thought the governor, let's hear, she made, I thought, a pretty decent uh, argument both sides and really broke down, in her mind, where the Confederate flag controversy sits. The hate-filled murderer who massacred our brothers and sisters in Charleston has a sick and twisted view of the flag. In no way does he reflect the people in our state who respect and in many ways revere it. Those South Carolinians view the flag as a symbol of respect, integrity, and duty. They also see it as a memorial, a way to honor ancestors who came to the service of their state during time of conflict. That is not hate, nor is it racism. For many others in South Carolina, the flag is a deeply offensive symbol of a brutally oppressive past. President Obama in the White House, by the way, still standing by the president's choice of words. We'll play it coming up when he decided to drop the N-word in an interview on race. But let's go out to your calls. Line four, Gene is listening on WABC in New York. Gene, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Gene. Good afternoon, John. Hi there. Prayers are with all the families in South Carolina, yes. New York. Uh, in regards to what the president used, the word, the N-word, uh, I feel it's almost like a psychological tactic to victimize all Americans. Meanwhile, his buddy friends are using the word constantly, and you hear it blasted on radios and Children and people of all ages are using the word like it's insignificant. Let's bury that word along with the flag. Thank you for the call, Gene. Let's go to line five. John is listening to the Savage Nation on WMAC in Georgia. John, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, John. Yeah, I just got two comments, one on Obama and one on the flag. Obama's doing nothing but inciting violence again. He's done it for over five years. I don't know. It's like he, like he wants to start a war among, among the people in this country. But it's definitely, uh, he definitely has not brought anyone together in this country, and I don't think he ever will. Um, as far as the flag goes, um, Nikki Haley said it was a, 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 a reminder of their brutally oppressive past. She didn't have to say that. No, there was there was black and white soldiers that fought for that flag. Yep. Um, the, and a lot of people don't understand. She could have took that opportunity and, and told everyone, you know, this this war was started because of taxes, not because of slavery, but she didn't say that. You know, as far as that flag goes, I'll fly that flag before the American flag because that American flag doesn't stand for the people of the United States of America anymore. That American flag only stands for those people in Washington, D.C. That's all that flag stands for. Do you fly the Confederate flag, John? No, I do not fly any flag, but if I oh. flew a flag, I would fly a Confederate flag over a, an American flag right now because that current flag that we have does not represent the people of this country. Thank you for the call, John. Let's go to Jim on line nine. He's listening on KSFO in San Francisco. Jim, this is John DePedro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Jim. Uh, yeah, I think it's extremely offensive for Obama to use that word. Uh, it makes him no better off than any racist who actively uses the word. Um, he, him being half white, I mean, in my mind, he's more half honky to use that word and for him to go to the, the funeral and put himself in the in the spotlight is equally offensive it's going to tie up traffic it's going to make it more difficult for people to who are going to the funeral to mourn i mean you know he could set up a big screen tv and do a eulogy and a speech but and also as far as the flag is concerned i, I think take the flag down if it offends people you know put up another flag uh, you know just to shut obama up Thank you for the call, Jim. Well, I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna do it, then you go. And there's no higher honor in this country than to have the president of the United States go to your funeral. I, I don't know about that. I mean, there's gonna be traffic regardless, and it's not. Why should that be different than anywhere else that he goes? But if if you're gonna go, that is the highest compliment to have the president come in person. He, in fairness, the president would be criticized then if he didn't go and was then just appearing on a screen. It's not like the Academy Awards when Michelle Obama appeared. And then one to announce Best Picture. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Now let's play. This is cut two. This is what you're hearing people talk about 
the President of the United States, President Obama, would Ronald Reagan have done this? Would Kennedy have done this? Would any president have done this? The President of the United States, and the White House says he's standing by it, an interview with Mark Marion, in talking about race, decides to drop the N-word. Racism, we are not cured of. And it's not just a matter of uh, it, it not being polite to say in public. That's not the measure of whether racism still exists or not. It's not just a matter of overt discrimination. We have to, societies don't overnight completely erase everything that happened two to three hundred years prior. Let's go to line six. Kyle's listening to the Savage Nation on WBAP in Fort Worth. Kyle, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Kyle. Yes, thank, thanks for taking my call. You're um, very welcome. What I wanted to say was the most obvious answer to the question as to why the president used that word was simply because he can. Um, I am a white American. I call myself an American-American. And I live in a predominantly black neighborhood. And uh, I hear that word literally dozens of times a day. And you said earlier something about uh, even Hispanics are using the word now, which I find to be true also. Um, but, you know, the president being, um, I guess, half African American um, makes it okay for him to use that word. Would Ronald Reagan have used that word? No. Absolutely not. No. You know what else, Kyle? I mean, this is a conversation on bringing people together and the divide on race, and then he uses language that, let, let's face it, he can get away with saying it, but if you're not a person of color, then you can't use it. So he even uses that moment to demonstrate the problems with race by really demonstrating the problem with race. Yes, sir. I agree 100%. Thank you for the call, Kyle. one 855 400 Savage is our phone number. Remember, log on to our website, michaelsavage.com. All the latest news and headlines. Let's go to line one. Vince is listening on WFTL. Vince, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Vince. Hi, John. Thanks. Uh, Very welcome. Good to take my call. Um, Thank you. I'll try and make it short. Uh, I was born in South Carolina. Family moved to New York after my ninth birthday. Um, I've been there, and I've got relatives all over the place. But uh, what everybody is missing and dancing around the fact, what uh, Mr. Obama and uh, Governor Haley and uh, the, what, Graham, yes. uh, um, they're cowards. And what they're doing is they're playing right into the handbook of Saul Alinsky, never let a uh, catastrophe or anything like that go to waste. And what they've got is they've got the Republicans now coming out. Oh, they, well, just those two so far. Oh, take down the flag. Take it down. It's no good. Up until a week or so ago, there was no problem with it, and there is no problem with it. This is just used as a device to knock off people that are running for president as Republicans. That uh, and, I'll rem- and one other thing I want to say. Go ahead. State flags of Mississippi yep. and uh, Georgia. Uh, uh, look at their flags. Uh, Georgia, uh, the flag is almost all the stars and bars. And uh, Mississippi also displays the stars and bars. That's a fact. Now, uh, all you're, you're, you're right in a sense, Vince, that, that you know after this tragedy, they're, they're looking for, for someone to go after. And it's not enough that they, they caught who it is, and he's a degenerate loser that should never have been in the possession of a weapon and served no real purpose. And now they have him. I don't know how long he's going to last, but it has to go beyond that. And 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 you know, to, to again further it, it does seem that suddenly now it's they want to go beyond just him, even though he was just a lone gunman, and they want to go after something much bigger. And in this case, it is the flag and the South and the Southern pride, and how much it does mean to a lot of people. One eight five five four hundred Savage. If you're one of those people, I'll give you the time. If you fly it, if your family always has, if it's something that you do rally around that is different, I'll, I will give you a chance to 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 make the argument, or just to you know enlighten us a little bit, or just give us your perspective. Let's go to line eight. Scott is listening on W F A Y. Scott, this is John DePietro, and you're on the Savage Nation. Hello, Scott. Hey, sir. Good afternoon. Hey there. Thing I'd like to correct is that. Uh, 
this, what's displayed on the Mississippi state flag and Georgia state flag is not the stars and bars. It is the battle flag that was never the national flag of the Confederacy. Okay. The stars and bars looks a lot like the stars and stripes. Yes. Which is the reason the battle flag was created, because on a smoke-filled, nasty battlefield from a distance, the flags were often confused and you had friendly fire. So to correct the problem, the Confederate Army created the battle flag, which has the St. Andrew's cross on it. Yep. So that we could tell the difference between the stars and stripes and the stars and bars. Scott, do you think some of the problem is the way Hollywood has uh, has used the flag? If I controlled Hollywood, the education system, the universities, and the media, in a few years I could convince most people to hate the U.S. flag, and I could convince them that perversion is a civil right. <laughs> Thank, thank you for the call, Scott. I'm just thinking of when the First Lady, you know, the whole thing, the first time I've ever been proud of my country, just the way they re- regard the nation, even the president. and the You know, he's the president of the United States, and you'd never know it enlisting in the way that he wanted to throw, throws it out there. I think it was wrong. I think the context was wrong. They, You know, I don't think the first couple does anything to improve the situation. I think the situation continues to be inflamed. Let's go to line two. Kurt is listening on WBAP. Kurt, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Kurt. Hello, John. You have really some very intelligent uh, callers. Uh, I'll try to be as well. That's all right. It's it's Doctor Savage that attracts them. Go go right ahead, Kurt. Yes, sir. Uh, the uh, you know uh, uh, Michelle, the first lady, saying first time she was proud of her country. I remember that. Most people do. I'll tell you what. I'm a 62 year old retired 747 captain. Been all over the world. I've seen a lot of things. And I'll tell you what, I'm so proud of the people of Charleston, South Carolina. They came together in love and mourning, and they're not rioting like the pastor said at the Sunday services. Because some people expected us to riot. That's not the way we are. And you know what, Mr. President, that's not the way any of us really are. And I think everybody should turn our back on all these these uh, these little fires they try to light up. The new one's the flag. Look, like Nikki Haley said, most of the people in South Carolina have a right-thinking idea about what that flag represents. So she's willing to take it down because one of insane maniac kills some innocent church-going people, yep. and she's going to take down the flag. She's very illogical, and she is. Well, so, you're exactly right about uh, the no rioting, Kurt. No, without question, you're right. Folks, one eight five five four hundred savage This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, and this is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in. For Dr. Michael Savage, you can call into the program, 1-855-400-SAVAGE. I'm seeing that CBS in Atlanta is posting a story. Facebook petition calls for National Burn the Confederate Flag Day. More than 8,000 people have liked the petition for Burn the Confederate Flag Day. And also, where's the the Detroit Free Press, an op-ed? They're saying that the Confederate flag needs to be burned and also likens it to the evil and viciousness to African Americans as the Nazi swastika flag is to Jews. Let's go to line seven. Thomas is listening to the Savage Nation on WTMA in South Carolina. Thomas, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Thomas. Yes, sir. Um, I'd like to say I've been on the fence for many years about the flag, uh, trying to understand both sides of it. I've kind of leaned barely off the fence now. I think it should come down just because of the of what's going on in our, our nation. We've gotten to come together. Right now, if ISIS came over here full-blown, we're not as one as a country. We've got to get our crap together uh, and put all this petty stuff behind us. Regardless of who the president is, I agree with you, Thomas. Again, you're listening to The Savage Nation. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. And remember the website, michaelsavage.com. Join The Savage Nation. Call now.
Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. And welcome to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, taking your phone calls. If you'd like to call into the program, be part of it. Just dial 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. Celebrate America this 4th of July with Countdown to Mecca. Dr. Savage's new thriller, bestseller, Countdown to Mecca, and it's available right now at the website, which is michaelsavage.com. Well, you can also sign up for the Savage Newsletter, which arrives two to three times a week right into your inbox, totally free at michaelsavage.com. Sign up for that Savage Newsletter. And keep in mind, the Savage Scholarship winners will be announced coming up July 2nd. 1,700 applicants submitted essays. 1,700 applicants submitted essays on what it means to be an American. Five winners of the 1700 will receive $20,000 each, total of 100000 that Michael Savage, Dr. Savage, put into this. Again, that's coming up on July 2nd. Also, remember at the website, whether it be headlines, all the latest news on borders, language, culture, some of the headlines right now, the Charleston killer raised on the liberal credo of Obama and Hillary. That's in the Savage newsletter. Tens of thousands of dogs skinned alive, cooked at China Festival. You also have the story on the Taliban suicide bomber blows himself up at an Afghan parliament as six gunmen attack and a lot more. And also the Savage audio with Donald Trump told Dr. Savage he will not run on a third party, and you can also read the Dylan Roof Manifesto, which targeted blacks and Jews. He, of course, the accused gunman in South Carolina. It all starts by going to michaelsavage.com. Well, President Obama, again, the White House right now, refuses to take back that the president was speaking about race. He was doing an interview on a podcast this comedian Mark Marion's podcast, and here's what the president said. Now, keep in mind, when you hear the beep, this is the commander-in-chief, the president, dropping the N-word. Here's President Obama. Racism, we are not cured of. And it's not just a matter of uh, it not being polite to say or in public. That's not the measure of whether racism still exists or not. It's not just a matter of overt discrimination. We have to, societies don't overnight completely erase everything that happened two to three hundred years prior. There is the race baiter in chief. There's the president stirring the pot. Does that sound like someone who's trying to bridge the divide? Does that sound like someone who's bringing people together? Using, you know, the White House was questioned about the intention of using it and the debate who can use it, who can't. People of color can use it. Again, you talk to, you see any interact with any young people of color, they constantly use the word and they use it as a form of endearment. You know, we've 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 heard it obviously in rap songs. They they I think it was interesting that the hit show on Fox, the hit show so far of the television season was the show Empire on Fox. They wanted to use the word and were told no. And the president of the United States drops it into an interview. Now, there's other news, and it has to do with the Confederate flag. The governor of South Carolina, Nikki Haley, has announced, let's listen, she says it's got to be removed from the state capitol. We do not need to declare a winner and a loser here. We respect freedom of expression, and that for those who wish to show their respect for the flag on their private property, no one will stand in your way. But the state house is different, and the events of this past week call upon us to look at this in a different way. Fifteen years ago, after much contentious debate, South Carolina came together in a bipartisan way to move the flag from atop the Capitol Dome. Today, 
We are here in a moment of unity in our state without ill will to say it's time to move the flag from the Capitol grounds. Let's go to your phone calls. Starting on line seven, Bill is listing on WABC in New York. Bill, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Bill. Thank you, John. John, I want to go back a few steps to that incident up at the college with the professor where he was breaking into his house and the police acted stupidly. I never quite got it because he was renting that property from the college. Now, how do you break in from something you're renting? You call the campus maintenance and they come over with a key. My observation is that was the first setup to start the ball rolling here. He should have called campus maintenance, got a key, and came in. But they orchestrated this thing. They knew somebody would call and say, hey, somebody's breaking in. And they flew with that, and they had their beer fest and all, and the cops acted stupidly. That was the setup. That- well, that, that was, thank you, Bill. That was the first incident where it began, and we've seen basically where, where the police are thrown under the bus. Uh, the police, that, you saw the policeman when they had the big beer summit that summer. I mean, the, the, the policeman was very reasonable. He was the one that was screaming. They didn't know who he was. But that was the first sentence where Bill is correct, where the president basically, you know, kind of threw the police under the bus. And now we're faced with there's a war on police in this country. Let's go to line six. Robin is listening on KBET in Las Vegas. Robin, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Uh, yes, sir. Thanks for taking my call. For Welcome. Caller, um, I just wanted to say, make two remarks. I can't believe that the president, our chief, is sitting there making the remarks that he made on a podcast or any type of cast using the N-word. Uh, it's not a word I use, and I'm 49 years old. We don't use it any longer. But to the flag, I see two points on the Confederate flag. You cannot forget the past of where you've come from and what has happened and where you're going. And just be glad that you're no longer there. The, the, the flag should remain to be whatever it wants to be because it is our history, and we're trying to erase history, and he's trying to stir the pot by bringing everybody that he can bring when it was handled in such a dignified way. He wants to bring people there to riot and start another Ferguson when they handled it so well, and my heart goes out to these wonderful people that did the right thing uh, the way they have conducted themselves in this state. And that's all I have to say that I'm very saddened today it's a sad day in this country, like Dr. Savage would say, yes. that he is doing what he's doing, and people are just falling in at will. No, it's true, Robin. Thank you for the call. Let's go to line four. Ben is listening on WGOW in Tennessee. Ben, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Ben. Hey, John. Thanks for having me on. Welcome. It's three inconvenient truths, if you'll allow me to discuss them quickly. Um, I support the flag being flown there as a, again, a son of the South. Uh, I grew up in public schools believing that, uh, being ashamed of my Southern heritage because of everything I was taught in history. Uh, the North was right because it was trying to free the slaves and the South was just trying to keep people in bondage. They were completely wrong. And, um, I believe that growing up as a child, I, as an adult, I read and read and read and, uh, found out that, you know, the flag has been hijacked over all these years. Um, The Confederate flag has been hijacked just like the rainbow has been hijacked, just like the American flag could have been hijacked. There's many, many people across the the globe who would look at the American flag and think of it as a symbol of hate. People would look at the rainbow and say that the rainbow is a a symbol of sexual perversion when it's just a a common childhood nice symbol. Well, but Ben, when when you have, I mean, you know, when you correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe, you know, the Klan has used the Confederate flag as a backdrop. This uh, alleged gunman used the use this as a backdrop. Uh, you know, and when when you talk about hijacking, it, it, it's tough to, you know, some of the people that have latched onto it. Don't don't you agree that they're the ones that have hijacked it? The the people who have latched onto it have hijacked just just like you know the gay and lesbian committee has hijacked the the rainbow. I, again, it's all right. I I don't think I I don't think you you, you can't compare the the two with no matter how much you may not like that. Uh, I was unaware that someone was offended that someone grabbed the rainbow flag, but you're talking about somebody going into a church and allegedly you know massacring, brutally murdering for absolutely no reason nine beautiful people that were just there to have a Bible service. Let's go to line one. Rodney is listening on WBAP in uh, Dallas, Fort Worth. Rodney, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Rodney. Hello, John. Thanks for having me on. Welcome. The, the, 
president's racial slur is is just going to increase the division, and the the burning of the flag, the Confederate flag, is is going to increase a division. And we're really talking about using language of division these days. But you know, I think one thing that's going to help in in reuniting this country is celebrating the, our common Christian religious heritage that we have. And you know, and, and I'm an African American man, and I'm here in Virginia. And you know, one thing that I'm doing, I have a nonprofit, and we're talking to our our state rep and getting a, a an actual date of recognition of of our religious Christian heritage, which goes back to 1607. Well, Rodney, let, let's stick on what you initially said. You know, you, you're exactly right. With now this talk, thank you, Rodney. What there's going to be a national burn the Confederate flag day that's already petitioned on uh, Facebook, and that's going to get people angry, because it does mean, you know, Southern pride, and it means a lot to people that grew up with it and think of the history and don't think of it as as a hateful tool, but the president is the wrong person. We have the wrong person in office. I mean, is there anyone listening that you believe that President Obama has tried to bridge the divide with race relations? It, it, it does. It seems to be worse. one 855 400 Savage is our phone number. If you'd like to call in, first time callers, welcome. 1 855 400 7282. Do you think it's wrong that they're going to take down the Confederate flag? And how about the burning of the Confederate flag? I think that's just going to inflame people even more. Let's go to line 7. Jay is listening on WMAL in Washington. Jay, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Jay. Hi. Uh, if we're going to be taking this kind of double standard approach, and kind of a knee-jerk reaction to burning the Confederate flag. I got to say, we're going down a dangerous road. Not only is it is it history, but we have double standards in hypocrisy again. Because in the North during the Civil War, we had five slaveholding states that fought in the Union. You know those states? I don't. Okay, Delaware, Maryland, Missouri, Kentucky, and West Virginia. But what's your point? My point is. What what are they trying to achieve by burning a flag that is it's 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 just history symbolic? It's as much as you say that, Jay. Thank you for the call. For some people, it it means more than that. It means you you talk to anyone, listen to some of the comments for people who play it of African Americans. It means a lot more than just oh that's history. Especially when you have a killer that just gunned down allegedly nine people and he's standing posing with it. One eight five five four hundred. Savage, this is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, and this is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Our problem is not all kooks and Klansmen. It's also the cruel joke that goes unchallenged. It's the offhand comment about not wanting those people in the neighborhood. Let's be honest. For a lot of well-meaning, open-minded white people, the sight of a young black man in a hoodie still evokes a twinge of fear. That is Hillary Clinton. You're listening to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in. For Dr. Michael Savage, you can call into the program at 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. And also go to our website, michaelsavage.com, all the latest news and headlines. Let's go to line three. Jesse is listening to the Savage Nation on WBAP in four. Jesse, once, twice, we'll go to... Jeff on line five, who's listening uh, to, on KUGN in Oregon. Jeff, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Jeff. Hey, thanks for taking my call. First, I want to say that I my heart goes out to those those victims in this church shooting, and and it's I'm proud to have uh, the people, those family members, who were so courageous and and forgiving this guy. Who I'm not sure. If uh, deserves forgiving, but uh, proud to have him as fellow citizens. Uh, as far as uh, the shooter, I believe it's uh, uh, he he's, he's was created by uh, uh, things that have been done with this administration, and I believe there was a story about him 
really uh, getting involved in racism after the Trava- uh, uh, Trayvon, Trayvon situation. Yep. And uh, what I think the problem is, is the left is running out of racists. They have got to keep creating racists to keep the, the race hustlers in business and keep their voting blocks and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they're well, running out. Well, Jeff, but it, it, it's... You know, it's tough to ignore someone that allegedly walks into a church and says, I'm here to kill black people, and then proceeds to shoot and kill nine people. Right. I think that's horrific. And, uh, uh, but I believe that uh, him watching the situations uh, like the Trayvon Martin thing, was, which was based on a lie, uh, and, and that's my, my information is that uh, that kind of uh, inspired him to become a racist or more active in that kind of uh, uh, mindset, which is well, important. You know, listen, Jeff, I mean, I think we're anyone that would create uh, or, or, or commit an act like this to show up and want to make an incident and want to make history and make a point and do it at this famous church where these people have gathered, including a child, for Bible study and then to go in, there's... I just don't buy any type of motivation or anything like that. And then, you know, he was a coward. The reports are that he then was supposedly was going to kill himself and he didn't plan it. He had run out of bullets and then basically just fled. But I agree with those that say, you know, if you know, if, if this guy who is so so evil and such a low form of life, if he was if he was really uh, a tough guy and really wanted confrontation, then he would have gone into a, a tough neighborhood or fought, uh, you know faced off against a gang. But could they be a bigger coward than to walk into a church, of all people, and shoot and kill innocent people that gathered for a Bible study? What about the flag being taken down? It's going to be taken down. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to The Savage Nation. You're listening to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You can join the program by simply dialing 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Just dial 1-855-400-7282. Don't forget, log on to the website, michaelsavage.com. And also sign up for the Savage Newsletter. At michaelsavage.com. The Savage Newsletter arrives two to three times per week, right to your inbox, totally free. Sign up at michaelsavage.com, where you can also celebrate America this July 4th with Countdown to Mecca, the latest bestseller by by Dr. Michael Savage. Just a reminder, the Savage Scholarship winners will be announced July 2nd. Now think of this. Michael Savage put 100,000 into this, 1,700 applicants, five will be chosen, they'll receive $20,000 each, and all you had to do was submit an essay on what it means to be an American. The winners will be announced July 2nd, obviously two days right before our nation's celebration of birth, July 4th, and again, be listing scholarship winners announced on July 2nd. And remember, when you're on michaelsavage.com for all the latest news and headlines or the Drudge Report, where you can always get the latest headlines. Like the Weather Channel, taking an active stance on climate change. Weather Channel, looking beyond cold fronts, summer showers, a project features the voice of 25 prominent people talking about the need to take action on climate control. Now, the Weather Channel says it's, quote, Climate 25. That's the name of the series is about science, not politics. Fox News reports Southern Baptists urge to reject any laws legalizing gay marriage. Prepare for civil disobedience. That's the message one prominent pastor sending 16 million members of the Southern Baptist Convention saying American Christians should be prepared for massive fallout if the Supreme Court legalizes same-sex unions. You also have the outrageous story that I saw on the Drudge Report. Now, you, we've been uh, talking about the fact that the president, President Obama, did an interview. The White House has already said he's not going to walk it back. The president did an interview where he dropped the N-word. 
and was trying to make a point on race, even though, let's face it, you know, there were, there's an appropriate time for it. I don't think the commander in chief should use that language. And there's also, if you're trying to bring people together, would you use language that only certain groups of people can use? Well, now on CNN, Cornell West has reacted to the president's use of the N-word. And uh, language is a little difficult, but called him the first N-wordized, if you can follow that, president. Cornell West said too many black people are N-wordized. I would say the first black president has to become the first N-wordized black president. And then just kept going on and on and using it over and over and then also, and then said, this is Cornell West now, we, we know he's president of all America, but white supremacy is as American as cherry pie. Do you get the feeling that the division is growing stronger and wider, that President Obama is not bringing people together and other leaders in the black community are not bringing people closer together or trying to bridge the gap that continues on race relations 1-855-400-SAVAGE as a result of the shooting and the tragedy in South Carolina the governor of South Carolina Nikki Haley has now announced that that Confederate flag is going to be removed from the property of the Capitol let's go to line 7 Donna is listening to the Savage Nation on WMAL. Donna, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Donna. Hi, John. Thank you so much for taking my call. It sounds to me like they're clearly trying to create another civil war in this country. And what's sad to me is, first of all, I'll tell you, I've resided in the South. They're God-fearing, loving people down there. They take pride in that flag, not because it represents bigotry, but it represents their history and their pride. And there's nothing wrong with that. And if our president and our government has a problem with slavery, why don't they really Google it, look back at, at African slavery, where tribes sold one another off long before Europe did it. And I am really sick to death of them accusing all of us Loving Americans, patriotic Americans, as being bigots because it's false. It's a false narrative, and it's just divisive, and it's designed to incite and create a crisis. Well, you know what's interesting, Donna? Thank you for the call. Is notice, you know, I, I don't think you're wrong. Look at how then the president uses language that, again, unless you're a person of color, you certainly can't use it. And it is used by people of color, even in a, in a fondly way. In, in a way to uh, show camaraderie, the N-word is used. So let's go to line eight. Davenport is listing on WDDQ in Georgia. Davenport, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Georgia changed this flag a few years back. And what what's going to be next? They're going to take down these thousands of monuments, these Confederate monuments in all these cities, towns, and county seats throughout the South. And how about Stone Mountain? They're going to take that monument. Are you familiar with Stone Mountain? I am not. Well, Stone Mountain, they've, uh, it's got the statue of Robert E. Lee, Stonewall Jackson, and uh, Jefferson Davis on it. And it's a great, big, huge Stone Mountain. I'm surprised that you haven't heard of it. But. <laughs> I'm sorry, Davenport. No offense on that. I, I you know, it, that's a you raise an interesting point though of of with the, whether or not the statues and the buildings with the Confederate names, if if in fact they will be next, because a lot of times they'll you know there will be more, whether it be a Cornell West or maybe even uh, the president. President Obama, by the way, will be traveling to Charleston to deliver the eulogy at the funeral of the Reverend coming up on Friday. I believe the Vice President will also be accompanying the President. Let's go to line three. Rick is listening on WJCW in Tennessee. Rick, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. John, thank you. Uh, I would like to reiterate probably your last three callers regarding the flag and the last gentleman. Uh, I'm a reenactor. I'm a living historian, and I'm interpreter at a local county museum. I just want to tell you what happened in 2001. I was privileged to be in Charleston 
to bear the Hunley, Hunley crew, and the entire town came out black, white. Tens of thousands of people, they were handing us bottles of water because they truly appreciated what we were doing. And I really, truly believe that uh, Haley is wrong with uh, her decision. I think it's political. And uh, she's putting down the history of her great state of South Carolina. Do you think the flag is uh, is loved by both uh, black and white people alike? Yes, sir, I do. Because, again, I've been... I'm a living historian. I've been reenacting for 14 years. I've, I've done my research. And the slaves were treated like family. There were bad things, of course. However, by and large, the slaves weren't treated like chattel. They were treated like family. They were educated. They were uh, taught religion. And they were embraced. And the town of Charleston so it epitomizes that in my mind, John. Well, apparently, I mean, we could play you some sound, but apparently not everyone shares that love of the time of slavery that, that uh, you seem to feel that everyone professes. I um, I find that a little difficult to believe there. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Let's go to line two. Carol is listening on WFTL in Florida. Carol, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Thank you for taking my call. Um, I'm very upset with the leaders of this nation, in particular President Obama, who are, in my opinion, are inflaming people, trying to cause trouble. Now, in personal experience, I live in a community where blacks and whites, we live together. I actually go to the grocery store in a predominantly black area. I never have a problem. I don't understand how a president who's black himself, who was elected for two terms, can actually do this. It makes no sense. So I am tired of the division. I think the people in Charleston, South Carolina, who attended that church and who were victims of that atrocity, came out of that with grace. Yes. Did, didn't he? Did, yes. Did he not? Carol, what about the president using the N-word? I mean, I don't you think that just inflames the situation? I think that is horrific. It's despicable. And I don't get it. I just, I don't understand it. Well, I, thank you for the call, Carol. I mean, you, you don't get it if you're trying to reason that someone is trying to bring people together. But I, I, I think it was said for a different reason. The White House knew he, he did that on purpose. He said it to shock, for shock value. He said it in a way that I understand the point apparently he was trying to make, saying, well, it can't just be that you just don't use that word. There's overt racism. But the, 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 the discussion on slavery and that, you know, we're not cured of it and it needs to be, I, I, there's no solution on how to be cured. There isn't also, do you notice there doesn't seem much to be accountability for whether it be the people that burn the CBS or the people that attack the police it, it is almost uh, a get-out-of-jail-free card of immunity for people that if you feel that there's overt racism or that somehow you've been wronged and it's never going to be right no matter how long ago it was, that it's almost like a green light for behavior. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Let's go to line 9. Aaron is listening on KSFO in San Francisco. Aaron, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Uh, hi. Um my first time calling sorry if I'm a little oh great no it's fine okay so I just have a quick question I mean it's it's regarding this this atrocity I mean it, it, it's very devastating but my question is why is it when a Muslim attacks the American people it's considered an isolated incident but when a white male attacks black people all white males are responsible for that attack why is it that they all have to take the blame, but when a Muslim doesn't attack, it's just an isolated incident. That, to me, is, is I, I can't understand that. And to me, that's the fact that the church was able to bring the people together in spite of it yes. says a lot. Yes. The, the exact opposite. Instead of using this 
to bring the people together like the church did. He used it to divide the people and to promote gun control, which to me is again he it's against the american the american way so and for the president the word that the president used isn't the word that the rapper says a lot about how he feels about blacks in the united states thank you for the call aaron let's hear clip nine this is the president talking and mentioning gun control and whether or not the prevention regarding the church massacre i think it's important as i mentioned at the White House to step back and recognize these tragedies have become far too commonplace. Few people understand the terrible toll of gun violence like mayors do. And whether it's a mass shooting like the one in Charleston or individual attacks of violence that add up over time, it tears at the fabric of the community. It costs you money and it costs resources. It costs this country dearly. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Again, this is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800 800- B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, taking your phone calls at 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. As always, log on to the website, latest news and headlines. It's michaelsavage.com. Let's go out to your calls. Line four is Rand listing on WFTL in Florida. Rand, you're on the Savage Nation. Mitch on line eight listing on WTMA in South Carolina. Hello, Mitch. Hi there. Um, Two points I would like to make. One, racism will not come to Charleston. We will not allow anybody to force it on us it's tragic what happened here but we will be stronger do you feel that there have been attempts to try to create more division many attempts from outsiders and I'm sure our wonderful president will try when he comes down here for the funeral how, how, do you, how do you feel, Mitch, about your governor's decision to remove the flag? I've been for removal of the flag for many, many years. If the flag offends somebody, and it does, then remove it. I'm sorry? No, I, I was just listening to you. Thank you for the call, Mitch. That is the, the latest with uh, Governor Haley, Nikki Haley, saying the flag will be removed from the state capitol. Let's go to Chris on line seven, listening in Tallahassee on WVFT. Chris, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Chris. Hi. I just find it a little odd that all of a sudden, because of what this flag represents to some people, we're up in arms, and and everybody has an opinion. Everybody's got a, uh, a dog in the fight. But when they take our flags out of schools and the Pledge of Allegiance to the the American flag that's supposed to be the unifying symbol of all people, that uh, that all of a sudden is a righteous thing. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm the only one that finds a bit. Well, thing. that is an interesting point, Chris. Again, check the website, michaelsavage.com. This is John DePietro. We've been sitting in, taking your calls for Dr. Michael Savage, and you've been listening to The Savage Nation.